Next up, ladies and gentlemen, to speak to you on policy in action, step changes in the ease of doing business in Sri Lanka. Please welcome Mr. Pasan Vanigasekara, Director General of the Board of Investment. Mr. Vanigasekara, over to you. On behalf of the Board of Investment, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Colombo Stock Exchange, let me warmly welcome you to the Sri Lanka Investor Forum and this session on the ease of doing business in Sri Lanka. As the apex body entrusted with investment promotion into the country, the Board of Investment has long appreciated the importance of the ease of doing business. The government has accordingly embarked on an ambitious journey to bring about exponential changes, to bring about leapfrog improvements in the ease of doing business in the country. I have here with me the Secretary to the State Ministry of Money and Capital Markets and State Enterprise Reforms, which has been entrusted with championing the initiatives. It's RMP of NIAC. The initiatives cover various aspects from startup to seamlessly running a private enterprise, in terms of setting up shop, things such as company incorporation, securing property, procuring utilities, as well as securing credit matter. During commercial operations, trading across borders, paying taxes, enforcing contracts, as well as ensuring minority interests are some of the things that concern. As such, various stakeholders and agencies need to get involved in the task of state ministry headed by Honorable Ajit Niwad Kadra, they headed the huge task of coordinating and monitoring of this national effort. Mr. Secretary, please speak a little bit about the initiatives that your ministry has taken and how your ministry went about coordinating this, uh, so many agencies that are involved. Yeah. Uh... Yes, Pasan. Uh, our ministry has taken a number of uh, steps to uh, facilitate and uh, implement these uh, reforms in a well-coordinated manner. Under the guidance of uh, Minister, uh, Honorable Minister Ajit Nivad Kabral, we brought all the respective line agencies into a round table and discussed their reform agenda. And then we uh, prepare a time-bound action plan for each and every uh, reform. Not only that, we closely uh, monitor the implementation progress of these uh, reforms uh, in order to uh, achieve those targets within the agreed uh, timeline. Uh, in the short run, uh, we uh, basically focus on um, eight uh, indices out of the 10 you have mentioned. And um, actually our uh, aim was to simplify the processes and uh, shorten the, the, the processing time and the uh, reduction of the transaction cost. Uh, I think uh, with that initiative, uh, we were able to uh, complete number of uh, reforms in the, these uh, targeted uh, areas. And uh, we will highlight uh, all these reforms in our final submission to the World Bank. And uh, all these reforms are very important to uh, build up uh, business-friendly environment in this country. And uh, accordingly, uh, we hope that our country ratings will uh, go up. I understand, Mr. Ratnayaka, that some of these changes, the relevant line agencies have been able to accelerate, resulting in the country being able to make a leapfrog uh, movement in the country rankings in the ease of doing business index. Now, let's talk a little bit more in detail because we have identified out of the 10 areas, we have identified eight areas of key focus. And within those eight, we have identified specific action items where we can make quick wins. And these initiatives, I, I understand, have been uh, uh, in operation since 2020 uh, and going on to the early part of this year, which should reflect, some of them should reflect in our rankings hopefully giving us a push, maybe about 15, 20 notches. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, when it's come to the, the 
different indicators. The first uh, mm -hmm. indicator is starting business. That's uh, measure how simple the co company registration process in a country. Now, uh, in Sri Lanka, we have introduced the new uh, ERO, EROC system. That's an online system uh, which connects with the, uh, all relevant uh, agencies like uh, Internet Revenue Department, uh, Department of Labor, uh, Central Bank, uh, EPF uh, section, etc. And the system uh, facilitate uh, sharing of information among these agencies uh, uh, on real-time basis. And uh, now an investor can uh, uh, register his company within one day by submitting uh, one uh, application. Once the company register approved and uh, issued a registration number, this data set uh, transfers to the other agencies, uh, Internal Revenue Department and the Department of Labor and the Central Bank to issue the other uh, requirements, I mean the uh, wet registration number, TIN number and the EPF number, etc. So, uh, Prior to uh, implementation of this, this uh, EROC system, uh, we have to follow uh, uh, at least seven procedures to uh, get the registration done. And it took about uh, eight days. Uh, but now uh, it takes only one day to complete the entire registration process. That's amazing. Exactly. Going down now. Uh eight days to one day. Exactly. And the integration of these uh, the various line agencies. Um, let's move on to construction. Now, I understand that um, some of the local authorities uh, have opened up a single window, especially the Colombo Municipal Council, uh, the, the local authority in the capital city, and uh, the, the ability to submit just one application instead of various uh, applications and that too, online submissions. How has that helped uh, improve the ease of doing business? Yeah, person, if I remember uh, early days, it was mandatory to obtain uh, three certificates, uh, non-vesting certificate, ownership certificate, and the building and street line certificate from uh, Colombo Municipal Council. Uh, that's the approving authority of the uh, uh, Colombo city uh, prior to start any uh, kind of a construction. Now the Colombo Municipal Council has uh, uh, reduced the uh, number of certificate required and uh, they provide their service via a single uh, window uh, counter they have established using a single application uh, without any cost. Uh, in addition, this indicator uh, uh, covers the, the, the how easy to obtain a water connection also. Right. Now, uh, we have amalgamated the steps relating to obtaining uh, uh, water uh, connections. The Water Board has introduced uh, a single application form to uh, provide the water connection. Anyone can submit now uh, the application to get uh, the water connection. And the uh, system uh, integrated with the online uh, payment uh, system uh, also. So, uh, these reforms altogether reduce the uh, number of steps to complete from uh, 13 in uh, 2020 to uh, 10 in 2021. So that's a, that's a uh, good achievement. And uh, number of actions, as you can see in the screen, are in the pipeline. And uh, once we complete all these uh, numbers, uh, we can further uh, improve the, the system. Right, and, and, and these the reforms, uh, in terms of time, how much time has it been able to cut down? I think uh, in the early days, uh, it took about uh, 86 days. And uh, once we complete all this uh, process, uh, uh, we will be able to uh, cut down at least uh, 30 days. Wow. So, uh, Almost one third. Exactly, yes. Great. Um, moving on to property registration. Um, again, I, th I, I believe there is a digitization process involved with the uh, land registry and um, again, a single window where um, applications can be submitted and the issuance is also uh, digitized and the uh, 
and they, we, we seem to have an ambitious target of a single day of uh, registration. Yeah, Colombo Municipal Council uh, uh, has launched this uh, online uh, land register uh, ELR uh, system, converting the manual process into the, the electronic uh, form. And uh, the service is now uh, provided through the uh, single uh, window count uh, I mentioned uh, earlier. Now, earlier the investor has to physically uh, come to the uh, uh, Colombo Municipal Council and wait uh, a long time to uh, get the, uh, the ownership certificate. But now they can uh, receive the certificate as soon as uh, uh, the land gets registered at the Colombo uh, Land Registry. Uh, looking uh, forward, uh, we also uh, planning to introduce an uh, independent uh, complaint uh, filing mechanism and tracking uh, uh, mechanism at the Registrar General uh, Department. So with all these improvements, uh, we have been able to cut down the time required for land registration uh, substantially. Let's move on to credit. Um, I believe the Central Bank has been able to introduce a improved credit scoring team, which sort of trickles into improving the risk management at lending institutions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, this area also we have achieved a good uh, progress. Uh, the Credit Information Bureau has implemented the credit scoring uh, system. And now all borrowers, uh, uh, either individual or corporate, uh, can uh, now obtain their credit scores uh, without any uh, trouble and the information relating to uh, obtaining these scores are available in the uh, CRIB uh, website. Now, in addition to that, CRIB has also introduced a fast-track uh, credit evaluation and the fund disbursement uh, for lending institution. Uh, this is an improvement of uh, risk management process uh, at banks and the lending institution, as you correctly mentioned. Uh, Crib, uh, I believe you uh, refer to the Credit Information Bureau? Right. Right. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, I mean, uh, we can uh, further improve the, the strength of uh, legal right index uh, by uh, bringing reforms to uh, bring up Sri Law and uh, this action is also in our cards. So uh, with those uh, improvements, I think uh, we can achieve a, uh, remarkable uh, progress in this area also. Let's move on to paying taxes. Something I believe no individual or corporate would want to, but necessary in reality. Some, an area where we seem to have made significant changes leading to improvement in the ease of doing this, especially when it comes to um, e-filing of returns as well as e-payments. And the best news is the abolition, abolition of several taxes. Yeah. Please talk about how, how these have uh, created a better doing business yeah. environment. Yeah, you are correct, person. Uh, actually, our plan is to uh, implement a, a fully automated uh, tax payment uh, system with simplified and uh, uh, predictable uh, tax regime. Uh, with the implementation of a new tax regime and uh, reforms uh, recently, we were able to uh, reduce the number of uh, payments per year from uh, 36 to 9, cutting down uh, 27 uh, wow. payments. And I think uh, this is a good uh, improvement. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, with the abolition of uh, nation building tax, the number of payments per year reduced by uh, 12. And then um, combining uh, monthly VAT payments to one annual payment has resulted in a reduction of another uh, 11 uh, payments. And uh, payment reforms in uh, corporate taxes also reduce the number of uh, payments by another uh, four payments. So altogether, as I mentioned, uh, we have cut down uh, 27 payments. And uh, introduction of e-service to uh, file uh, company return and e-filing uh, of income return also reduced uh, the time to comply, number of procedures and uh, cost to the taxpayers. 
So all in all, some of these changes should uh, give a, a significant push. Exactly. Yes. To yes. Sri Lanka's ranking yeah, up yeah. the uh, ease of doing business. Yeah. In addition, uh, an online payment platform for ETV has also been uh, introduced by the central bank. It's it's very heartening to see some of these changes, especially during this pandemic era, where the government machinery seems to have adopted a digitization to ease. Uh, the process of engaging uh, those government agencies. Uh, let's move on to trading, uh, cross-border trading. Uh, I believe this is no exception where dig digitization has uh, taken a firm uh, place in its operations with online registrations, submissions, approvals, as well as notifications of those approvals. And in fact, I believe that it has resulting in almost a 50% uh, improvement. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, now, uh, doing business uh, index uh, measures the time and cost associated with uh, three sets of uh, procedures, uh, documentary uh, compliance, uh, border uh, compliance, and the mm -hmm. uh, domestic uh, transport. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we can see a good uh, progress in uh, all these areas. Sri Lanka customs, uh, has developed an online system for uh, custom uh, declaration, <coughs> sorry, uh, and notification, electronic uh, trader registration, and uh, submission of uh, electronic uh, manifest. And they have introduced a SMS uh, system now to notify the assessment status to the, the exporter. And also, a world best custom data uh, system is now available with them. And it links with the uh, the other relevant uh, the government. World? Exactly, Asikuda World System, uh, linked with the other relevant uh, government agencies. So uh, you can see the time taken uh, for different steps have uh, come down uh, drastically with the implementation of these uh, digital uh, systems. Right. One area, other area where investors would be keen is probably to secure the investment by way of being able to enforce contracts, right? Now, I believe on the legal front, the Just Ministry of Justice has also implemented uh, several um, changes, um, introducing again uh, online um, filing and submissions, as well as uh, the Supreme Court has moved into online hearings. Um, again, uh, bringing about radical changes to the systems and processes, resulting in um, further reduction of uh, delays and the processes involved. Yeah, enforcement of contracts. Uh, now, this is an area uh, Sri Lanka was uh, lagging uh, behind. And we need to give a little more attention uh, to uh, improve the system. I know that the, the Minister of Justice uh, uh, is currently implementing a, a very ambitious uh, uh, reform program to address uh, these uh, current issues. One important uh, development, as you mentioned, uh, is the uh, Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal has started the virtual hearing now. So the uh, facilities are now available for electronic uh, filing of uh, applications, motions and other uh, documents. Now, uh, as you can uh, see in the screen, there are a uh, number of activities in the, uh, the pipeline. And uh, with the uh, implementation of uh, these, uh, all these uh, programs, we can uh, significantly improve uh, the, the situation under this uh, enforcement of contract. Great. And I believe it's almost half. The target, the yes, uh, long-term yes. target is to... Roughly about half, yes. Right. Let's move on to the crown jewel in Sri Lanka's portfolio of uh, opportunity for investment, the port city. As you know, port city will be a trade and commerce hub, logistics, marine hub, hospitality and leisure hub complete with marina and theme leisure parks. But most importantly, from a um, corporate perspective, we want to position it for regional headquarters. Um, Sri Lanka geographically lies the heart of, if you park aside the 
west of the Atlantic to take the rest of the world. Sri Lanka lies at the center of that uh, part of the world right. with access to over 2 billion people in the west, east coast of Africa, Mideast, um, South Asia, East Asia, etc. So, Port City is going to be a special economic zone where ease of doing business is going to be on par with other regional hubs such as Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, etc. Let's focus on some of the initiatives with uh, the Port City. Yeah. Uh... Masan, uh, the Colombo Port City is the largest uh, foreign uh, direct investment in Sri Lanka. And uh, it has the potential to reshape our economy and also to uh, generate uh, new opportunities for uh, regional development. But in order to get the, the investment into the, the port city, uh, you have to create an investor-friendly uh, business environment uh, in the port city. So I think uh, that's why the government has uh, proposed the, uh, the uh, Port City Economic Commission uh, with wide range of powers to oversee the development of uh, Port City as a special uh, economic zone, as you uh, correctly mentioned. Uh, Port City law is one of the important investment uh, related laws in uh, Sri Lanka uh, recently uh, passed. The Port City Commission uh, is to function um, as a single window investment facilitator in relation to uh, registration, issuing licenses and mm -hmm. approval for business entities in the special uh, economic zone um, area. So if you uh, look at the, the, the provisions that support uh, achieving uh, these set targets, uh, the Port City Commission is empowered to make rules mm -hmm. and uh, exercise all powers relating to uh, development control within the Port City area. And uh, there will be a uh, state manager who will assist in uh, providing uh, utility services uh, such as gas, water, electricity, internet and uh, communication, uh, storage, drainage, uh, etc. And uh, in relation to uh, registering of properties, again, the Port City Commission uh, authorized to uh, play a role of uh, condominium uh, management authority for uh, apartment uh, to be constructed uh, within the, the area. And the acts uh, also uh, requires uh, local courts uh, to give priority to any legal proceedings uh, instituted on uh, civil and uh, commercial matters arising uh, from a course of action within the uh, port city area. So I think uh, with all these facilities, uh, port city will uh, promote investment and uh, act as a boost to uh, economic growth in our country. Thank you, Mr. Ratnayaka. That was indeed an eye-opener. Transforming a country's economy requires long-term vision, but also pragmatic steps and bold actions. Business enterprises are the lifeline of any economy. Sri Lanka, being no different, has a long-term plan to transform the administrative and legal landscape of the country to make it the most desired investment destination in the whole of Asia. In addition to its strategic location with access to key markets, industry-leading incentives and investment protection, educated and adaptable workforce, quality of life, and fast-developing world-class infrastructure. Improving ease of doing business has been identified as a key enabler. Ladies and gentlemen, in summary, I would like to draw your attention to a few salient points from our discussion. There is appreciation at the highest echelons of government of the paramount importance of improving all facets of the ease of doing business, affecting all stages in the life cycle of business enterprises as we embark on a decade of growth. We have been in the amber zone on this and much progress has been made over the last five years. From the top 100, our ambition is to land firmly in the green zone 
and position ourselves within the top 25 to 30 most business friendly countries in the world. A critical analysis has been done of the areas for improvement. Realistic targets have been set, pragmatic steps have been taken, and many more are in the work in progress stage. This involves streamlining, simplification, and reduction of the number of processes, reducing the number of days from start to finish, and bringing about transparency for tracking while minimizing costs. Firm plans are afoot to increase our rankings of the 10 indicators, where 40% of them will fall within the first 30 and the next 40% under 50. We've made great strides in this respect and quick wins which we've made over the last few months should see us move 20 notches up the scale very soon. Unfortunately, the cutoff for the 2021 ranking was 1st of May, I believe. Some of it, some of those should get reflected in the 2021 ranking, while the others should reflect the following year. While all of these changes are taking place countrywide, further step improvements in the ease of doing business are expected in the special economic zone of the Colombo Port City, which I'm sure you have heard much about. The Colombo Port City Economic Commission, with wide-ranging powers, ought to significantly reduce lead time in all aspects and thereby take its notional ranking to be on par with the global top 15 to 20. As we embark on a decade of growth, we pledge our commitment to making Sri Lanka to be one of the most business-friendly countries in the world. And we take this commitment very seriously. And we look forward to your partnership as we present our world to you. Welcome to Sri Lanka. Welcome to the next growth haven. Hope you found this segment useful and we thank you for your participation and time.